Hello, hello and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org Let's have a quick look at three different markets and we're starting with Bitcoin. Before we jump in, let me tell you that if you're watching this on YouTube, this is a significantly delayed video. If you want to get timely updates that might help you with your investment decisions, although this is not investment advice, I'm just sharing my own experience and opinion here. So if you want to get more timely updates, join us at myfinanceteacher.org. As I mentioned in a few of the recent videos, we were getting a little bit late in the ongoing two month cycle in Bitcoin, even though we did try these risky trades on the long side and uh, they were successful. We've had this big green candle on Bitcoin giving us a significant break above the 200 day moving average. So I'm happy those trades worked out well, even though the recent trade was probably past the midpoint of this Bitcoin two month cycle. And by now I think we're nearing the beginning of a declining phase because we see that Bitcoin price has poked through the upper range of the Bollinger Bands several times already. We see a couple of red candles on Bitcoin over the last couple of days. So this might signify that we've started the decline and this decline might actually continue for a couple of weeks or even longer. If we look at 14 day RSI, we've been into overbought territory for several days and now RSI is also starting to decline. At the moment, Bitcoin is over 22.5% above its 50 day moving average. So it's not extremely stretched on the upside, but it is somewhat stretched on the upside. So I would expect to cool off and come back closer to that 50 day moving average over the next couple of weeks. After all, if you look at the history of Bitcoin, even here in early to mid part of last year, when Bitcoin surprised a lot of people by reaching nearly 14,000 in summer of last year, we see that almost every low of these two month cycles closed below the 50 day moving average. And there was only one exception when the low came above that 50 day moving average, but even then, the price was only 7.5% above the 50 day moving average. So a current stretch of over 22.5% might mean that we have to cool off over the next few weeks. And lastly, looking at the duration, we're now on day 52 in this two month cycle. That also means that we're nearing the end of the cycle, which means it's time to get a move on with this declining phase. Next, let's have a look at S&P 500. So far, so good. I was expecting S&P 500 to come back up to its 200 day moving average before starting a short term decline. Here on the 29th of April, S&P 500 came somewhat close to that 200 day moving average. It was one and a half percent below that 200 day moving average. And just as we mentioned in the previous video, when we were closing out of our long trade, it looks like we have a few days to a couple of weeks in front of us of a decline in S&P 500. And looking at the S&P 500 futures, we see that today it's over half a percent again. So this series of two red candles is likely to continue today as well. And lastly, the most interesting thing for today is gold as well as gold miners. What we see on gold is, again, it didn't really come very close to retesting the support zone at 1650, not very close to the 50 day moving average either. However, what I like is that we are now closer to a regular duration of a short term daily cycle. If we consider this recent low on the 1st of May as a possible end of the previous daily cycle. After all, today gold is above the closing price yesterday. Although everything can still turn around and give us a continuation of this decline, I think there is a good chance, at least a 50% chance that the previous cycle has finished. They usually last for one and a half to two months. So there is a good chance that previous cycle did actually take 42 days, which is pretty close to a normal duration. And gold might be ready to continue the advancing phase of the longer intermediate cycle. And the continuation of that intermediate cycle advancing phase. So it could be the case that gold is now starting a new short term daily cycle 
within the ongoing intermediate cycle. And the intermediate cycle is still very young. These usually last for half a year. So far we've been in an ongoing cycle for only about a month and a half. So I would still expect possibly a couple of months of general upward momentum. Although, of course, in the short term, we can see periods of cooling down. So my outlook at the moment, although remember, nobody knows the future, based on the cycle duration and on the fact that we have a couple of green candles at the moment on gold, I think there is maybe 50 to 60% chance that we're now in an advancing phase of the second short-term daily cycle within an ongoing advancing phase of a longer intermediate cycle. And this second cycle will probably take us all the way up to 1800 on gold over the next several weeks. Although there is also a chance we continue this short-term decline, which shouldn't go very deep, there is still a chance we might retest this 1650 support zone. If the decline continues, I think that should happen over the next several days before we start our advance into the second daily cycle. So the chances for a continued decline then would be somewhere around 45 to 50%. Continuing with GDX, we've finally seen GDX fill this gap at about 32.8. And on Friday, GDX also tried to fill this gap at about 31.5. This gap didn't fill completely before GDX shot up and closed again back above that breakout level of $32. So to recap, we saw GDX test that long-term resistance zone in the middle of April, pull back down from that, break above that $32 at the end of April. And what we're seeing at the moment is it looks like GDX has successfully retested the breakout filled up some of the gaps and has closed above that breakout level. This green candle is a Friday candle for GDX. Since then, for gold itself, we have a Monday candle, which is also green. So there is a good chance that GDX might continue up today as well, which also means that there is a chance that both gold and GDX are going to continue their advance. So in my personal trades, I will try to catch some of that move upwards. I'll talk about the trade in a minute. I just want to have a look at GDXJ as well. These are the junior miners. And I want to compare the performance of GDXJ to GDX. Since the middle of March until these recent tops, GDXJ more than doubled. We have 119% gains on GDXJ, although we were not in this vehicle. GDX, on the other hand, in the same period, gained nearly as much 113%. Usually GDXJ outperforms GDX, especially later on in a rally when investors are a little bit more confident about the rally and more confident to put money into more volatile assets such as junior miners rather than senior miners. So if gold is ready to continue moving upwards to 1800, and again, there is no 100% certainty on that, I think GDXJ might be a very interesting vehicle to try to catch some of that upward momentum. Additionally, comparing GDXJ and GDX, GDX has already broken above the long-term resistance at $32 and above this recent high at the end of February, while GDXJ still hasn't even broken above the recent high at the end of February. So as we continue deeper into the ongoing intermediate cycle in gold, as the price possibly approaches 1800, that might make some news headlines, bringing more attention into the gold sector and possibly help such vehicles as GDXJ to break above the recent high and continue much higher. Talking about the targets for GDXJ, if we continue the advance right now, I'm going to assume that GDX is going to break this recent high at the end of February at about 46.5 because GDX has already broken that high. The next target after that for GDXJ would be this high that we saw in August 2016, and that is at $52. So from the current 41 to $52, that would be a nice gain of 26%. Whereas for GDX, our next resistance zone is either at this low in the beginning of 2013, which is at 36, or at this low in the middle of 2012, which is at 39. 
So from current prices up to 36, that is over 8% gain. And up to 39, that is 18% gain. As I mentioned to the members at myfinanceteacher.org, in my personal positions, I'm holding 60% GDX, but for the rest of 40%, I'm actually thinking about entering into GDXJ for the continuation of the rally rather than GDX. So over the next day or two, I have to devise a strategy for allocating the rest of the cash. One possibility would be to enter if we see a little more confirmation from GDXJ of a continued move upwards. So if GDXJ is above, say, 41.5, that will bring us above the closing price on Thursday. I might allocate another, say, 20% out of the 40% cash into GDXJ. So I'll think over that until the US markets open. That will happen in another few hours. And I will make sure to update the members at myfinanceteacher.org. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, join us for more regular updates. And uh, that is all for now. A quick review of Bitcoin, general stock market, gold and gold miners. I wish you guys a nice day and good luck in your trades.